Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. I'm developing my own Web3 game, my own Web3 basketball strategy game. And I love playing Web3 strategy games. So this is a daily series I'm starting with one of my favorite Web3 games, Splinterlands, where I'm calling it the daily five and nine. I have nine matches. My goal is to win five matches um, within playing nine total. So uh, let's jump in and uh, go for it. See if I can do it today. All right. Oh, looks like I gotta sign in real quick. All right, so it looks like I got the um, I got the holy protection and the uh, fury or the enrageability or spreading fury. So we got 50 uh, mana points to work with. Um, gonna be able to take a lot of hits. Whenever we get uh, Holy Protection, I like to do my best to max out my lineup because that's essentially gonna be uh, six free hits. So let's go with a little, uh, I think I'm gonna go um, Dragon Splinter for this one because we have a high mana count. <clears throat> and I'm gonna lean into the, um, the water because I really like the Deep Lurker. The Deep Lurker is one of my favorite cards in the entire game. Uh, whenever I go Dragon and I have a high mana count, I do like this uh, one-two punch of Jin Chihuahua and the Carnage Titan. I uh, still have 31 points to work with, which is great. I'm gonna use the Chaos Dragon, and then we have seven. So how do I wanna round this out with seven? I'm always, I mean, he's a very straightforward um, offensive piece, but I like the, the Kulu Swim Hunter. And that leaves me with three. And uh, I am going to go with the, um, the, uh, the heal from the, uh, from the Guardian here, because the more I can keep the uh, Jen Chihuahua healthy and healed, the more melee hits it's gonna be delivering the thorns to. So here goes, match one. There we go. Oh, got hit with some poison. Yeah, the Jin uh can um, can absorb a lot of uh, a lot of blows, especially when there's a heal component uh, happening behind him. Look at that! I lost my healer. This may be a tough one. Yeah, we keep uh, we keep missing our hits. That eight speed becomes really really tough to engage with. Oh, look at that. Yeah, my, my low speed uh my low speed cards are not able to to make contact with Jin. This is gonna be a, a tough, a difficult start, it looks like. Honestly, as I play a lot, one thing I've realized is I do think I underestimate speed uh more than I should. I usually I go uh I'm pretty focused on offense a lot, and then I also like uh tactical combinations. Like you saw, I tried to match up the Jin Chihuahua with um with the healer in the back, thinking I could uh, keep him camped out, delivering a lot of um, a lot of uh, thorns damage, but clearly that's not going to work out. At least I didn't zero out on this one. I eliminated one of the cards. I think it's probably going to stop after one, though. Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh, and one. By the way, once I either hit five wins or nine matches, that's when I stop playing, stop the video. Hence, it's called the daily five and nine. All right, we got 21 mana cap and our shield, no, no neutrals, and our shields are gonna be absorbing magic. Uh, with this one, you know what I'm gonna do is I am going to come right at it with just straight melee. And I'm going to go with the um, the Antoid Platoon. And then I like using my fives and threes in melee with fire. Um, yeah, I like the Serpentine Spy. And then let's get the, um, let's get the Scorch Fiend in there. We're gonna move um, 
the striker back into the anchor. And um, let's see what happens here. Ha! My opponent is coming at me with a fire, probably melee heavy team as well. So this is going to be all about absorbing blows. <laughs> Look at that. We have essentially the exact same lineup. That's crazy. Uh, it looks like I have slightly higher ranked cards. Uh, but I think this may come down to who gets the first the first move. And I got it. So that should be advantageous, but uh, I didn't. But the other thing is going to come down to our misses as well, too. But getting the first move for me is going to be significant because I take out his Serpentine Spy, which is, which is uh, pretty big. There we go. I keep missing on his striker in the anchor position, though, which could end up being an issue. Yeah, I think I'm in trouble. Th those misses on his striker are what got me. All right, 0-2. This will be embarrassing if my first ever video in this series is an 0-5. Uh, once, once it becomes mathematically impossible for me to get five wins within nine matches, then the video stops as well. Okay, so we got no armor and all evens. All right, no armor and all evens. I think I'm gonna go death because I like going with the curse wind deliver thorns immediately. I like to put the, the corpse fiend, I like to put my zero, unless I've got a strong reach monster i like to put my zero card in the in the second position or at the end to absorb some blows uh, i do want to get the venari bonesmith in here to deliver some poison and i think i'm going to go see now the weirding warrior isn't as powerful here because there is no armor to bust through so i'm gonna probably put another four out there and let's go with a uh, big decision here. Uh, let's go with the Revealer and see if we can just uh, incapacitate some of their offense. It's interesting. Revealer with the Cursed Windicu is maybe not the best matchup because, you know, delivering those thorns, you want your opponent's melee attacking and absorbing those hits. And um, yeah, he's, got a, he's got a nice team to counter this. No melee. And uh, the Pelicor Conjurer is going to be reflecting a lot of magic right back into my magic monsters. This could be another difficult one. And he's healing. Okay, eliminated the Conjurer and eliminated uh, his zero. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can hold on. Looking difficult. Yeah, that three offense. The... Um, the uh, General Sloan plus one on the archery there um, made that difficult. So tough loss, 0-3. Never give up, though. One thing about me, you'll see that I never give up in the 5 for 9. Strangely, my computer seems to be moving a bit slow. All right, so the big thing here, we've got the um, delivering knockout, and then we've got the earthquake as well, too. So a lot of times with earthquake, I like when dragon's available, and then I also like going um, uh, earth, because I do like the Pelicor mercenary, and I also like the uh, regal periton, which is also just one of my favorite cards in general. And then there are a couple powerful flying monsters within dragon as well, too. We got the chaos dragon, and so there's actually a lot of powerful flying cards uh, amongst this group, amongst Dragon. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with the Din Jin Chihuahua, put her right up front, and then I'm going to go with my little healer here in the Chimer Princess, and then I'm going to stick my Fiend back in the anchor position to absorb a lot of uh, any uh, sneak attacks. So I like that I have the Regal stuck here in the middle um, with the flying ability to uh, to ideally avoid, um, you know, obviously won't get hit with the Earthquake and then avoid a lot of the offense from the opposing team as well. All right, I'm down 0-3. Need a win. Mm. 
Goodness, this thing's moving slow. All right, my opponent, not surprisingly, is coming at me with the uh, dragon splinter as well and leaning pretty heavily into, into flying monsters. Uh, let's see what happens. And again, no, no melee monsters to lean into my, my thorns in the, in the first position. And yeah, the void dragon is going to be avoiding a lot of the, um, the magic I'm throwing its way. It's probably going to be another tough loss, unfortunately. Uh, but let's see. Maybe we'll eke one out. I have all flying monsters remaining, and the Pelicor Mercenary should be able to knock out the Void Dragon. Thank goodness I needed that one to hit. Oh, lost my Regal. Oh, come on, you gotta land that one, buddy. We're gonna get some self-heal. Okay, thank goodness. All right, I don't know if he had, eh. I, yeah, the self-heal, we're gonna ride this one out. Man, that was a tight, well, as long as he doesn't miss. As long as he doesn't miss. Okay, nice. Finally got a W. One and three, one and three. So I only have the capacity to lose one more match. Okay, 32 mana, all odds and armor. A lot of times when I'm getting the bonus armor, uh, I like to either go water and really lean heavily into the armor, um, or I do like the Curse Windicoo with thorns here, but it's odd. So you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go water. So who do I want in the tank position? I don't have uh, a lot of my traditional tanks for water. So I think we're going to go with the Cruel Cethropod. I kind of like a lot of the low mana tanks. And then we'll come in with the Flying Squid. Uh, I'd like to see what other big mana cards I want to anchor this lineup around. Uh, I do like the, the Nerissa. I just like her straight magic power. So I have nine more with a three. And so I might be able to go with a three, three, and three here because I do like... There are three different water cards with this mana count that I do like working with. It's maybe a bit of a mistake. The Cruel Cethropod might not be worthy of the healing in the back, but let's see what happens. Again, I don't know why this is moving so slow today. First video blues, I guess. And there we go. All right, I have the higher ranked summoner by one. Looks like my opponent is leaning even heavier into armor than I am with the Venari Wavesmith. Let's see what happens. Again, I'm kind of going with a straight offense here. Uh, fortunately, not a lot of magic from my opponent. Um, so the, the Sethropod should be able to hold up getting the heal. It's going to lose its armor uh, relatively quickly. Or not quickly, but just it is. Uh, we're, uh, my sneak monsters are missing their hits here at the end, which is not great. But fortunately, the poison came through. Yeah, the Cethropod is hanging in there. Great. That was what I needed. Okay. And my magic should be able to eliminate the um, the Tide Biter here in this tank position. I have lost my healing, though, which is not great. Great. Yeah, I see. She's, uh, she's delivered. I love that. A pretty straightforward card is Nerissa, but I do love that three magic. 
It's 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 really good offense. Kind of reminds me of a basketball team when you just got an amazing pure three point shooter. Maybe doesn't add much to the defense and not a great passer, but uh, can can score buckets. And that's kind of how I look at Narissa. All right, two three. All right, we're getting a little speed in the movement of the game. All right, we're just gonna have no abilities and no legendaries. So. Obviously, no abilities. Uh, I like to lean into a heavy tank, uh, put the zero in the in the reach position, and then round it out with melee and um, ranged. So, what splitter do I want to leverage that strategy with? I think we're going to go death, and I think we're just going to go with straightforward cards here. I do like the crypt beetle in this position. Oh, actually, I can't put a zero. In the reach position because we have no legendaries i do uh i do like leaning into the magi of chaos when you lose all abilities because you're still getting the magi's true power because the power there similar uh to previous just just pure offense with the um with the magic and then in terms of strong ranged i have uh five more mana left we're gonna get the soul strangler in there and then we're gonna get the zenith archer here at the end and hopefully the Crypt Beetle can hold up, because I don't have a lot of tank power after the Crypt Beetle. God, I'm kind of double thinking this now. Do I want a different tank? And then rely on the archery in the back to provide the offense. I think that's the way to go, because Crypt Beetle can be susceptible to magic. Whereas, yeah, I think the 11 Defender can hold its own there. And then, you know, we'll just have the Chaos Agent absorb anything more. So we're really going to be relying on the Soul Strangler and the Zenith Archer for offense and the 11 Defender to do its job and, and absorb. Yeah, look at that. Looks like potentially a magic-heavy lineup for my opponent. Probably good. I got the Crypt Beetle out of there. The 11 is going to hold up a little bit better uh, against this magic, especially with the Regal and that high speed. Great. That was huge. Not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, now I think I may be out of the woods. Yeah, great. 3-3. Three, three. All right. It's a hinge match here. All right, 44. Aim true. So I'm always going to hit with, uh, with melee and ranged. And then uh, stampede. Great. What do I want to do here? Melee and range are always going to hit... Goodness, I really like going Death Splinter. Yeah, I'm going Death Splinter again. I'm just kind of feeling it today. We're going to put the Windaku in the front. Uh, I'm going to get some speed going here with the Supply Runner. I have some mana to work with. I really like the Dampier Stalker. Uh, not as much as the Deep Lurker or the Regal, but I do like it. Uh, let's put the Jin Moran up here. And I've got 12 more to work with. All right, so I think I could put a couple sixes in there. I got a couple strong magic sixes here. Yeah, the Magi of Chaos, and then we'll do the Necrosi. And I do like, I essentially have two tanks here, and I love the Jim Morant because he's also offense uh, without being in the tank position because he's magic. Okay. It's a pivotal game seven. The nine game series. All right, does have the um, the yeah the the Grum. The Grum can absorb magic. Obviously, Grum's biggest uh, deficiency is speed. But he becomes amazing offense, especially when he gets bloodlust going, which it looks like he is. Yeah, I couldn't quite thorn him out. All right, we got to get Grum out of there. Great. I didn't want Grum getting another bloodlust kill. That would have uh, been frustrating. I don't know if I have the 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 health up front to hold off this this attack. That was a big hit though. Possibly what's going to happen here. Nope, not happening. Dang. All right. Down 3-4. Went against a Yoden. Yoden is tough. I personally don't own a Yoden. I should probably invest in one. I could be eliminated after this. So we have um, 
blast and no abilities. So 48 and it's all blast. I mean, I, excuse me, got to go dragon here. I got to go quicks. And I think we'll go water because there's a lot of powerful magic in water. The big question here is who do I want to be my tank? I think we're going to go with the demon shark. Since we're losing all abilities anyway, the demon shark is just simply has a lot of meat on its bone in terms of absorbing um, absorbing attacks. Uh, two between Jen and Marissa, two strong uh, magics. Let's kind of lean into the chaos dragon. So I have five more. Do I want to go a three and a two, a four and a one, or a five and a zero? I think I'm going to go a three and a two and just stick a little archery in the back. Or do I want to go four one? Yeah, I don't have to worry about attacks hitting me in the back. So I think I'm going to stick back. Actually, I'm going to go with, with a high speed here and roll like this. I'm going to move the Chaos Dragon one ahead of Nerissa. All right. Match number eight. This is a stay alive. A little impatient. want this to move faster. It's funny, I've been playing a little while today and didn't have any slowness issues, and then once I started hitting record, slowness issues. All right, weird, oh yeah, there's no ability, it doesn't say it's weird putting the Maselic slip spawn there to absorb uh, blast hits, but it's not gonna be the case. No abilities this time. Uh, high magic, so the armor from my demon shark is, well, I guess it absorbs that, that ranged attack. I uh, really wanted to get the slip spawn out of there with that hit. <laughs> uh, yeah, bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, there we go. I do think I might be a bit overpowered. Maybe not, though. We may hold this... Thing is, they have two powerful monsters left, which does concern me. Yep, 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 yep. Tough loss. All right. Look at that. Daily five and nine, one three, lost five. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.